All right, so good morning. Thank you guys for showing up. This is the second offering of Introduction to ArcGIS for Server. I appreciate you guys waking up early to be here. Um, hopefully, it will be a, a value. Um, the good thing about this session is this session, think of it as the entry point into all the other ArcGIS server and portal for ArcGIS tech sessions, okay? In fact, uh, I co-present or present many of the other tech sessions or co-authored them. You should take this session if you want to learn more about ArcGIS for Server, the product. We're going to spend the next hour, and I want to make sure when you guys leave here, you have a fundamental understanding of the key pieces of ArcGIS for Server. What does it give you? Why do you care? What, you know, what are the different parts? And then from here, it's a stepping off point to the other sessions, like Introduction to Portal, or the uh, Administering Your Server session, or Portal for ArcGIS Administration, or the Security sessions, okay? Before we begin, how many of you are using ArcGIS Server today? A few of you, okay. How many of you consider yourselves ArcGIS Server administrators? A few of you, okay. I want to set expectations. This session has been designed to be an intro session. So for those of you who have used ArcGIS Server or consider yourselves an ArcGIS Server administrator, some of the concepts may be a bit of a review. My goal today is to make sure that for people who have not even thought about Server, to understand A, the key pieces, and then B, walk away with some fundamental understanding of the key parts of the product and, and where to go next. Okay? So we'll talk about some key concepts like cached versus dynamic services. What is a web service? What is the REST endpoint? Stuff like that. All right, so I want to set expectations. If you have some experience with server, this may not be the session for you. You're welcome to stay, but I just want to make sure no one's unhappy when they do the survey. Uh, my name is Derek Law. I work at the uh, Esri Redlands office, and I work with the server and portal teams. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I am presenting all day, but I will be in the showcase after the last time slot. So I think from 4.30 or maybe 5 o'clock till 6 o'clock. We have a lot of great staff at the showcase, or sorry, the expo, in the server island. If you have questions that you want to ask, please be aware the expo closes tomorrow at 1.30. So if you have a list of questions from your colleagues that you have to go ask, do it today or do it before 1.30 tomorrow, because we will close tomorrow at 1.30. Okay. Are we good? Any, any uh, questions? Uh, by the way, if you see me do a session, I run a pretty laid back session. Um, if you have a question, just put your hand up or shout it out. I'll do my best to answer it. If I don't know the answer, we'll take it offline. Um, you know, we can talk later. If you want a copy of the PowerPoint, you will get the entire uh, suite of PowerPoints probably in five to six weeks on a DVD or something like that. If you need it sooner, send me an email. That's my email address, and I will send it to you next week. It's not going to happen this week, but next week, or I'll give you my card. Okay? We good? All right. So again, thank you guys for showing up. What are we going to cover today? By the end of this hour, you will have a good understanding of what ArcGIS for Server is. We'll talk about the product itself and all its different pieces. We'll talk about how you can take content in ArcGIS Desktop and share it as a web service, so share it to the internet so you can have a larger audience. We'll also talk about, after you've made your web services, how you can share it with either ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS. And then we'll talk about the different client applications that can consume your web services. And at the end, I'll wrap up with a couple of slides on server extensions and then licensing. I know we all love talking about that topic. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. Let's get started. So I'm sure, how many of you have seen the slide before or a variation of it, right? Yeah, Jack changed it this year at the plenary. He modified the diagram. This diagram is the classic marketing ArcGIS as a platform slide, right? This is the web GIS pattern. This is where Esri's software stack is going. And just as a quick review, we have client applications on top. They could be desktop apps, they could be apps running on your smartphone or tablets, or they could be web browsers. These client applications search and discover GIS assets and resources through a portal. Note the lowercase p. It could be ArcGIS Online, or it could be Portal for ArcGIS. A portal is your central destination point within your organization for all of your GIS assets and resources. 
And it's only useful if it has data content and is powered by GIS servers. And I can deploy this pattern on my own physical machines or in the cloud if I want to, either in a private cloud or if I use ArcGIS Online. Now this is all fine and dandy, but I'm a meat and potatoes, tangible kind of person. Let's take this diagram and break it down. Because if you see the title of the slide, we tell people, oh, well with ArcGIS for server, you can enable the web GIS pattern within your own infrastructure. What does that mean? I have customers ask me that all the time. What does that mean, Derek? This, this is all nice, I feel good, but let's you know, go down to the brass tacks. What are the, what are the different pieces that I get? To quickly review, I have applications at, on the top. They search and discover resources through a portal. A portal is powered by a GIS server. Those are the three concepts. Now with ArcGIS for server, what do I get? Well, I get the GIS server. I get the web adapter, enterprise geodatabase, and the ArcGIS data store. These are different pieces that are on the DVD or in the box with ArcGIS for Server. I'm going to talk about each of these in the next hour. What do I also get? Well, I also get Portal for ArcGIS. And there's a whole other session on this where I can basically set up, think of it as my own ArcGIS online on my own machines in my own intranet. But not only that, I also get access to all of these client applications. So Collector for ArcGIS, Operations Dashboard, Survey123, ArcGIS Maps for Office, etc. So all those different pieces on the right hand side is included with ArcGIS for Server Standard or Advanced. If you have ArcGIS Server Standard or Advanced, you have access to those pieces since 10.3. We're going to spend the next hour going over briefly, taking a quick tour of all those different pieces. So far so good? Okay. So what is ArcGIS Server, right? It enables web GIS in your own infrastructure. We give you the different software components for you to literally install it on your own machines or in your own private cloud. And it's got ready to use applications and services to give you spatial data management. So you can manage your data in a geo database. You can do analysis with the geo processing functionality. You can do visualization by publishing map services or vector tiles. Right? The whole idea of ArcGIS for server is to take your data, typically you work in desktop, you work with shapefiles, you work with feature classes, but you want to share them out as web services. Why would you do that? You publish them as web services so you can have many more people working with and accessing that same data. You're sharing your data to a larger audience. Why would we do that? Well, we share our data to a larger audience so we can have many more people in my organization collaborating, working with the same authoritative content so we're all looking at the same base map. We're all looking at the same street network, et cetera. So far so good? Okay. Still too early maybe? So, okay Derek, you kind of have me interested. Are, is anyone using it? Absolutely. We have many different customers using ArcGIS Server. Let me jump out real quick. This is the uh, This is the uh, Esri product page, okay? Um, go to esri.com, server, success stories, and here you can see we have a whole laundry list of customers using ArcGIS for server. Do they use all the components? Maybe, maybe not. They can pick and choose which components they would like to use, all right? So you, you're welcome to go here and find out, hey, how is the Las Vegas International Airport using ArcGIS server? How is IBM using ArcGIS server, et cetera? I'm going to go back to the uh, PowerPoints now. Now we have this diagram which is all very nice. We know that on the left is our conceptual diagram. On the right is the laundry list of different pieces or components that we get with server. Let's take it a step further. You can see on this slide now I've literally listed out what you get with ArcGIS server. Now on the left hand side here are all the different back-end components. You guys, as the highly paid administrators and GIS analysts, will go back to your office and set this up. You can install the GIS server piece, which we'll talk about. You can install Portal for ArcGIS. 
You can install the ArcGIS web adapter, the data store, and also set up an enterprise geodatabase, also called a multi-user or ArcSDE geodatabase. And I'm going to spend uh, the majority of my time focusing on this back-end components for this session. Okay? We all know that all the administrative stuff is so sexy. I don't have any like, 3D demos to show you, but you, this is where all the, the hard logistical plumbing is set up and configured. Now, you get everything on the left, but you also get everything on the right. These are the client applications. So if you have server, standard or advanced, you get portal. If you get portal, you get everything on the right-hand side. All of these client applications, such as collector, ops dashboard, web app builder, they're all included. So if you see an application you like or that you want to use and you have server standard, you probably have it. Right? I just want to make you aware of that. Life is good. I get to say, hey, all this stuff is included at no additional cost. You can play with it. Now, I don't have time to cover all those client applications on the right. I'm going to touch on one of them, Web App Builder. But we have technical sessions on each of these client applications. There's a Web App Builder one that I'm giving later on today at 3.15. Okay. But again, all of these different pieces are included in the box or on the, maybe not on the DVD, but you get them, you maybe have to download them separately with ArcGIS for server. So you have all the pieces to set up that conceptual diagram on the left-hand side, that whole web GIS pattern within your own infrastructure. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, this is an introductory session, so I'm going to start with a clean page to make sure everyone is on the same page. All right? So for those of you who are GIS, or, sorry, GIS server site admins, some of this may be a bit of a review, but I want to make sure we have foundation. First, let's start with the idea, what is a GIS service? That's basically a process that's running on your machine. If you think about it, all those different elements at the bottom of the slide here, you can make with ArcGIS Desktop, right? So you can make maps, you can make features, you can make geometric networks or network data sets, you can modify content in a feature class in a geodatabase, you can make models, you can manipulate and work with imagery. We saw a great demo in the plenary. You can make locators to do geocoding, and you can also make schematic data sets. All of the content that you make in ArcMap, you can share. So instead of making it just a local piece of data, but share it as a web service. And at the, as, as you can see at the top of the slide, a web service is simply a process that's running on your machine. Once you share it as a web service, you can increase the number of users and audience members working with that data. So the GIS server piece itself, which we also call ArcGIS server, um, note we've dropped the four, basically has a relatively easy install and configuration, if you read the help doc. And I know whenever we buy that new DVD player, we always read the help doc comprehensively cover to cover and the appendix before we plug it in, right, to make it work. Um, it's designed to work with your enterprise systems. Right? I've been working with the product for six or seven years. It's actually very stable. It's fantastic. You, we give you the options to integrate it with many enterprise security systems, such as Windows LDAP, sorry, Windows Active Directory or LDAP. You can install it on your own physical machines, or you can install it in the private cloud. So we support many different cloud providers. We give special tooling for two of them. So if you have now, the Amazon Cloud or a Microsoft Azure Cloud account, you can install not just ArcGIS Server, but the entire web GIS stack within the cloud environment. Or you could choose to use ArcGIS Online. It's completely up to you. Now, the GIS Server is also designed to work with our back-end or server-side components. So things like the ArcGIS Web Adapter, which I will explain what it is a few slides from now. It works with enterprise geodatabases. So if you have an ARC SDE geodatabase in your office, you can use that as your data source to power your web services. And we also have something called the ArcGIS data store, which we introduced at the 10.3 release. You use the ArcGIS data store with portal for ArcGIS. And if you want to learn more, I'll talk briefly about it here, but you want to come to the introduction to portal session. So let's look at some nuts and bolts, right? If I want to install the GIS server, what do I do? Well, 
We support Windows and Linux, and these are actually screen captures straight out of the help documentation. Okay? Many different operating systems, etc. After, after I've installed the GIS server, what do I get? What are my primary interface pieces with the GIS server? Let's take a look. First, I get ArcGIS Server Manager. Think of this as a web browser-based console to manage your server site. Here is where I can look at how many web services I have. I can reassign resources to those web services. I can set security. I can look at reports to see how, how, how busy my services are. I can control my users and my roles. And on that rare occasion, that once in a blue moon when something goes wrong, that was a joke, right? Once in a blue moon when something goes wrong, I can check the log files, right? So this is, I would say you would probably spend 80 to 90% of your time inside ArcGIS Server Manager to, as the name would imply, manage your server site. This is one, bless you, this is one entry point to your server site. We also have another one called the Server Administrator Directory. Now this is kind of like an advanced interface. You also access it through a web browser. You do some commands here, such as change your security from HTTP to HTTPS, but it's really designed to kind of give you the uh, guidance on how you can write some scripts if you want to automate some tasks for your server site, like starting and stopping your services or adding a new machine to the site. And I'll show this to you briefly. We'll touch on this very briefly. If you want to learn more about this interface, come to the administering your GIS server site, uh, your GIS server tomorrow, tech session tomorrow, or go to the security sessions. And don't worry, I have uh, reference slides that are coming up. Finally, we have the services directory. So let's break this down. On the left-hand side, we have an example server site, and we have what's called the REST endpoint, the representational state transfer endpoint. I'm going to explain what that means in the next slide. But for now, all you need to be concerned about is the diagram on the, on the middle. After I've taken my data and I've published them as web services to ArcGIS Server, ArcGIS Server has this landing page called the services directory. Every single web service or data layer, if you will, is represented on this page as a hyperlink. This shows people what are the web services that are available from ArcGIS Server. If I were to click on one of those links, I would get more information about that web service. The spatial extent, the attribute information, what data it's covering, etc. And if I was to further click on it, I would actually open up that web service, open up that data layer, if you will, from ArcGIS Server. So we have ArcGIS Server Manager, the Services Directory, and the server administrator directory. Those are the three different entry points to work with my server site. So far so good? I'm going okay? Now, I said we have this rest box. What is that, Derek? Why do I care? I keep hearing about that term. Well, don't be intimidated when you talk to server and portal people. They like to sound smart by making all these terms, but when it boils down to is this. I have my server site on the left, and I can communicate with my different web services through different internet protocols. Think of them like languages, right? I can talk to my web service resources through the REST, SOAP, KML, or OGC internet protocol. I mention this to you because Esri spends a lot of its time, we support all four of them, not fully, but we support all four of these different internet protocols, these different languages, if you will, to talk to my web services, but we spend a lot of time working on the REST endpoint, okay? So all you need to worry about is, okay, if I want to talk to that web service, if, if I want to grab that data layer through the internet, can I communicate through REST? Yes. Can I, can I communicate through SOAP? Most of the time. Can I communicate through KML and OGC? Depends on the specific requirement. Okay, so far so good? Yes, yes, okay, it's still too early. Okay, I've talked a lot about academic theory. Let's take a look at the software, right? I'm always, I want to show you some cool stuff. So, let me just uh, minimize my desktop here. And I'm going to open up the services panel. So I've installed ArcGIS Server on my machine. And you can see here it's running as a process, ArcGIS Server. All right, just so you know. 
Now I'm going to open up Firefox and go to my Server Manager tab. This is ArcGIS Server Manager. As I mentioned, this is where you would spend 80% of your time where you manage your server site. So I have it installed. I've already logged in. And we have four different key tabs at the very top. We have our Services tab where I can view my web services. So here I have the Naperville folder with all my Naperville web services. And I have a nice administrator view of my uh, resources that are available. I can also go to my site tab and here I get information about my server site installations. So my server directories, my configuration store, which machines are in my server site, my data stores, so valid locations that ArcGIS server can get data from to power my web services. Um, I can also change my security. So if I go to the security tab, you can see here I can define users for my server site or roles, right? So I can collect together users. Notice from my security, in my case, I've actually configured ArcGIS server to work with Portal on my box. And finally, I have this logs tab, right? It's pretty cool. As I mentioned, on that rare occasion when I want to see what happened to my server, I can run a query and view my logs. And more importantly, I have this very cool statistics link where I can click on here and view reports about my services. So for example, between January 20th to February 4th, these different web services were being accessed and I can view on January 25th to January 26th, I had 15,953 requests for people to view that data. Okay, so I have some reporting. Now this is ArcGIS Server Manager, as I mentioned, where you would spend probably 80 to 90 percent of your time. If you want to learn more about this interface, I'm going to take a deep dive into this in the server administration session. Now I mentioned another way to work with your server site is the ArcGIS server administrator directory. You also have to log in here to work with it. This is not really meant to be a management console. This is meant to give you tips, if you will, or help you understand how to write Python code to write automated scripts for ArcGIS Server. But I could click in here and just like before, click on my services link and I view my services. I could click on security and hit configuration and notice my server site is set to HTTP and HTTPS, but I could change it, right? I could click update. I get a big warning, hey, you want to change something, be careful, and I could change it. Of course I won't because I'm chicken. Okay, I don't want to mess up my demos here. Now notice as I click these different pieces like security, let's go to users, every time, or add a user, every time I click a link, the URL up here changes, right? If I want to learn how to write automated scripts, what I would do is if, if I want to add a user, I'd actually copy this URL into my script. That's how we teach you on how to write automated scripts. And there's a whole help doc that goes into this. Okay. Finally, so we have our server manager, administrative console, web browser based, where I spend 80 to 90 percent of my time. I have the services directory, not as nice a UI, not really meant to do management, but really meant for you to learn as I click through these different components to grab these URLs so I can write automated scripts. And the third thing is the services directory. This is what the end user would see with ArcGIS Server. All right, let's, let's backtrack a little bit. Remember what I said. I have ArcGIS Server Manager. I have this Naperville folder. And here, this, it's a very nice user experience. I see all my web services and what's available. I have a thumbnail and I can click on one of these links to view more information about that web service. But remember, this is my administrator view. I wouldn't let everyone and their uncle log in here to view my data because it's an admin view. The everyday person, he or she, would work with the services directory. And I'm sure you're thinking, well, Derek, that user experience is not very nice. We designed this services directory seven years ago with the developer in mind. So notice I have these folders. They match the folders in ArcGIS Server Manager, right? 
I can click in Naperville and each one of these links represents a web service or a data layer that I could access. I could go to hydrology, get some metadata about that hydrology web service and actually click on it to open it up and preview it. Now again, this is meant for developers because once they find the layer they want, they would simply copy this URL, copy the REST endpoint into their code to reference that web service. Everyone with me so far? So I'm just bringing that up. This was meant with the developer in mind. He or she can quickly access the layer, copy that URL, put it in their code. Everyone with me so far? So hang tough on that story. Okay, let's move on. Now let's look at the three other different server side pieces that you get with ArcGIS for server. We also get something called the ArcGIS Web Adapter. And basically it's software that allows you to take your server site and have it work with a third party web server. What do I mean? On the lower right hand corner is a diagram or a conceptual diagram of ArcGIS server. So let's say I've installed ArcGIS server in my box. Those numbers 6080 and 6040 are ports. ArcGIS server is running here and it's listening. It's listening on one of these two ports, 6080 if it's unsecured or 6443 if it's secured. And it's saying, okay, I'm waiting for someone to contact me to do something. I'm waiting for a client application to make a request to draw an image or query a web service or something. And if I install ArcGIS server like that, life is good. It's on my box. Would I do this in production? Probably not. Because right now, if I set up ArcGIS server like the diagram, it's good for prototyping and development purposes, but it's not secure. So if you're going to install ArcGIS server and you do this, that's fine, but it's not a best practice. It's not secure. So what would you do? You would probably go to your organization's IT group and set up a third party web server. If you're using Windows, it's probably IIS, Internet Information Server, or you could use Oracle WebSphere or Jakarta Tomcat, some other third party web server. Now, in the diagram here, we're using IIS. To have ArcGIS Server talk to that third party web server, you install the web adapter. The web adapter is the interface between ArcGIS Server and that third party web server. It's not required, but it's optional. But we recommend it because it gives you an extra layer of security, right? Client applications would then communicate with the web server first. The web server says, okay, you want to talk to the GIS server? Let me redirect you to talk to the GIS server. Does this make sense for everyone? Think of it like another layer or another level of security. Instead of talking directly with the GIS server, which you can do, very dangerous, but you can do this, we recommend just giving another layer to protect your GIS server. So this is why the web adapter is like a reverse proxy. What that means is a client application connects to port 80 if it's not secure, or 443 if it's secure, and then it gets redirected to go to the GIS server. This is what it does. The other advantage of the web adapter is it also allows you to take advantage of some security features that are normally built into web servers, such as web tier authentication. And if you want to learn more about that, go to the introduction to server security session, which is today at 1.30. Uh, Jeff and Greg do a phenomenal job. I helped write the session. There's lots of ugly server, de uh, sorry, security detail. Not ugly in a bad way, but like you get your hands dirty in that session. So that's the web adapter. Everyone okay with that? We also go into more detail about the web adapter in the uh, server admin session. Now, we also have enterprise geodatabases, also called a multi user geodatabase, also referred to as an ARC SDE geodatabase. Basically, we can take a normal database, SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, Informix, or Postgres. We install some software into that database to make it a geo database, which allows you to store spatial data. Now, you may have heard of something called Oracle Spatial, which also stores spatial data. That's fine. But our geo database also allows you to store complex geometry models, such as topology, geometric networks, network data sets 
mosaic data sets, stuff that ArcGIS uses to model spatial relationships. The other advantage of a geo database is that we also support versioning, archiving, and replication. So archiving is recording all the transactions for your data. Replication is when you take content from one geodatabase and copy it to the other. And we also have versioning, and this is a big deal. We, ask, we, have, a whole, we have a whole suite of tech sessions on geodatabases, right? Versioning is the ability to have two or more people edit the same piece of data at the same time. Why do I care, Derek? Well, let's think about this. When you go to the ATM, and you take your card, your bank card, and you withdraw money, right? Let's say I take out 10 bucks, and I get my card back, and I get my $10. That's called a short transaction. The bank, as soon as you take out money, they apply that change right away. The transaction happens right away. It's a short transaction. Everyone with me so far? When I am doing data editing for GIS, like editing the parcel or editing the road, I may take a couple of hours or a couple of days to do that edit. Everyone with me? That's called the long transaction, right? We do some edits, we reshape the polygon, we save it, we open it up the next day, we reshape the polygon, save it again. That happens over a longer period of time. So what the geo database allows us to do is we apply that change right away in the database, but we trick it and we save these different um, changes in our delta tables. Um, maybe I'm going a little bit too deep. My point is, Inside the geo database, with the versioning capability, we allowed multiple people to edit the same piece of data at the same time by saving long transactions. That, that's the secret sauce that we provide for a geo database. Okay, are we all good? It's also called Arc SDE geo databases in the documentation. Finally, we have the ArcGIS data store. This was introduced at 10.3. This is something that you only use if you're going to use Portal for ArcGIS. I don't want people to be confused with the concept of a data store. In the uh, administration session, I explained the difference between the two. But here on this slide, you can see on the, on the right, we have Portal for ArcGIS installed. We have ArcGIS server installed. And in this case, we also have the ArcGIS data store installed. Behind the scenes, it's a database as well. It's only used by Portal for ArcGIS if I want to store hosted feature services, if I want to store 3D scene services, or if I want to enable the analysis tools in Portal. We don't have time to cover the ArcGIS data store in this session, but come to the Portal session or the administering your server session for more info. The point is you only need this if you want to enable a hosting server. If you don't want to enable a hosting server, you don't need to worry about this. This is optional. Okay? So if I want to learn more, we have lots of other sessions, right? The administering your server session. Oh, I apologize. I forgot to uh, edit out. Yesterday we missed it, so I have another offering on Thursday. Security is happening this afternoon. And also what's new, in case you want to learn more, and what, what new functionality is available, is coming on Thursday as well. Okay. Portal is happening at 10:15 right across the hall today. Yeah, so I, I have a slide for that as well. Are yes, ma'am. Are we covering versioning in more detail for these sessions? The answer is no. There's actually a specific session called I don't know Intro to Versioning or something like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know when that is, but we can look it up. Okay. Yeah. There is a specific versioning session. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Ah. The gentleman's question was, what if I have a piece of data in a geo database? Two people make different edits. Let's say I make the road go north, you make the road go south. What happens? We save both changes in a version, and we have tools to reconcile that conflict. Usually you would make an edit, I would make an edit. We have a whole bunch of tables behind the scenes to store all those changes. There would be a third party QA person, and he or she would decide which one to keep. And that, that whole session goes into that. Okay? We take care of you because we care about you. We love you guys. Yes, don't worry. Okay? So far, so good? All right. 
So now that we've covered the foundation, let's talk about how we can take data in ArcGIS desktop and share it as a web service, right? How many of you are desktop users? You want to learn about server? This is why we're here, okay? We're going to cover some basics. This is not a comprehensive session on publishing. Cover some basics. So how do I take data on my desktop and publish it to server? Well, I don't want to sound like a, a, someone trying to sell you something, but it's three easy steps. Author the content in ArcMap, then I publish it, and then I share it. Literally three easy steps. I'm going to demo this for you. Okay? So let's get started. How, where do I begin? Well, I begin with step one, and I go into ArcMap, and I can author my content. The beauty of using ArcMap to publish to the GIS server is that we give you a WYSIWYG user experience. What you see is what you get user experience. It's actually pretty nice. The relationship between desktop and server has evolved over the last eight years now that it's very robust. 99% of pretty much whatever you make in desktop, you can share it as a web service. Symbology settings, um, scale dependent renderers, all of that stuff will then get ported over to the, to the web service. Yes? The question is, does this apply to Portal 2? The answer is no. Okay? ArcMap publishes to the GIS server. ArcGIS Pro is the premier client that publishes to Portal. So there's a slight difference. Okay. Sure. ArcMap publishes to the GIS server. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. ArcGIS Pro is the application that you would use to publish to a portal. Okay. You're going to have to be more specific, sir. So you're saying 10.3, uh, 10.4, what? Desktop or, sorry, ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro? So the question was, can ArcMap 10.4 publish to portal? The answer is no. ArcMap, before everyone gets mad at me, okay, because I'm seeing the looks, ArcMap is a product that was designed based on ArcObjects technology literally 10 years ago. We have evolved it over time, right? It's built on ArcObjects. It's been designed to work with ArcGIS Server. ArcGIS Pro, which is new, built on new technology, two or three years old now, has not been designed to work with Server specifically. It's been optimized to work with a portal. And it could be ArcGIS Online, or it could be portal for ArcGIS. Now, I know what you're thinking, and I'm going to I'm going to acknowledge this. ArcMap probably has, like, I'm making up this number, a thousand different pieces of functionality. ArcGIS Pro is not there yet. It is coming over time. Okay, so that's, that's, I'm just the messenger, sir. That's how it works. I suggest you go to the publishing session and talk to those guys, but, okay. Are we good? Okay. <laughs> You, can, you don't have to fill out the survey, sir. Everyone else can. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Okay? All right. So how do I take data from my desktop and publish to server, right? You see we have step two. I publish. The first thing I do is I go to File, Share As, and I access the Share As a Service wizard, which is the screenshot to the left of the two diagrams in the lower right-hand corner. And it's going to ask you, do you want to make a new web service? Do you want to make a service definition file, which is a file that stores all your configuration settings, but you can publish it later? Or do you want to overwrite an existing service? You pick one of those three options. It then opens up the service editor dialog, which is what you see in the lower right-hand corner. And this service editor dialog is pretty key. This is where you specify all your different settings for your web service. Yes, ma'am? This is in ArcMap, absolutely. I'm old school. I love ArcMap. I'm, I'm too busy to learn Pro. I'm, that was a joke. Love, love ArcGIS Pro. It's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> then, when I set all my settings, because we care about you, the software says, you should do an analysis. We want to make sure that you have optimized your data for the web. Okay. Might be annoying. You could skip it, but we do the analyze anyways. Okay, we want to make sure you've optimized your data. I highly recommend you follow this workflow. 
Now before I demo publishing, I want to cover some key fundamental concepts of web services. I want to make sure we're all on the same page. And again, for those of you who are GIS admins, I apologize. Some of this may be review. But I want to make sure we're all on the same page and we understand some key terminology. Now, 95% of the time, in my experience, I tend to publish map services. Now you can publish other things like network data sets, spatial models, but you'll probably publish map services. And I want to make sure everyone leaves this session understanding these two terms, cached versus dynamic, because you hear about it all the time. Right? So let's take a look. What, what does that mean? If I'm going to have a map document and I want to publish it, what does it mean to be cached? Well, let's take a look. I have this concept diagram here. Just so we have, are on the same page, at the middle we have ArcGIS server. On the left-hand side we have an image. Now we normally take raster data or data that does not change very much and we cache it. What does that mean? In this case I have a satellite image. If I want to cache it, what do I do? Well, I take it and I break it up into smaller chunks, into chunks that we call tiles. So I take that image, break it up into tiles. I then take these tiles, and we have a tool that does that for you, by the way. We take these tiles and we put it in a folder called the cache directory. This is on the same machine usually as ArcGIS server, or it could be on a file share. So if I have this cache map service, what happens? client application makes a request that says, hey, I want to zoom in on this part of the image. Because we've already pre-created the tiles, server quickly serves up that tile to the client application. Does that logic make sense for everyone? So this is a cached map service. So why do we need to break the tiles? The question is, why do I break the tiles? Because that way we can render the image faster, sir. Instead of having to draw that huge image, Whatever I zoom into, I quickly pull that tile. Does that make sense? And it can get more complicated because I can have multiple rendering scales with multiple tiles. So depending on what rendering scale you go to, then you go to that tile for that scale. Okay? And there's a whole other tech session on caching, 1015. Okay. So far so good? That's cached. Well, what about dynamic? As the name would imply, it's more active, right? Dynamic map services are normally used for data that changes a lot, like vector data. So here I have server, I have my dynamic map service. If a client makes a request, what happens? Well, the service then goes back to the source data, generates the data, sends it back to the client. So let me ask you a question to make sure we're all listening or awake. What is faster? Cached? Who says cached? Who says dynamic? One person. OK, so the rest of you don't care, right? Because you didn't put your hand up. Cache is going to be faster nine times out of 10 because the data has already been pre-created. Dynamic typically tends to be, I don't want to say slower, let's say less performant because we're generating that image or that data on the fly. Does that make sense? OK, so this is something, you know, want to make sure we're all on the same page here. So, Going back so we're, we don't get confused, if I want to publish content from desktop to make a web service in ArcGIS server, I can make a new web service or I can make a service definition file. This is a file that saves all my settings so somebody else can publish it later. And something to keep in mind is I author the data, do analyze, and I can publish one of these two things. Yes, sir? Sure, the question is, when would I create a service definition file? Just to recap, a service definition file is, is when I go to ArcMap, I set all my settings from my web service, and I make a service definition file. So I don't make the web service, but I have a file for later. I may do that as a security best practice. For example, if I'm a publisher and I work in ArcGIS Desktop, I know the data, but I don't have the privileges to take that data and share it to the internet. So I make a service definition file, I then copy paste it or ship it to my IT person, and he or she, one of the beautiful people who has access to the internet, can then take that data and share it to the internet. Does that make sense? They don't even know about exactly. They don't even need to know about the data because the GIS expert, you guys, 
have taken care of that. That person just shares it to the internet. Yeah. Correct. So that's the workflow. It might be a security best practice. Yes, ma'am. The question is, cache and dynamic, does that apply to image services? The answer is sort of. I can have image services that are cached, but image services are also a special, unique type of service. They're not dynamic. They're an image service. And they have special properties that I know nothing about because I'm not a roster expert. But I know there's a session on that as well, ma'am. Okay. I can look it, look it up for you after this session, yeah. Okay. Um, keep, remember that story because there's going to be a twist to that story, cash versus dynamic. It's coming. Well, you have to be patient. Yes, ma'am. The question is, can I have vector data that doesn't change very much? Can I cache that? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. But there's more to the story. I'm telling a story. There's more to the story. Something that was mentioned on Monday. OK, so far so good? Are we good? Let's go to demo, OK? So I am, just, just so we're all clear, no smoke and mirrors. I'm in ArcGIS Server Manager. My UC folder has nothing. So I'm not tricking anybody, OK? It's empty. I'm going to go on arc map. I have this beautiful map of uh, geology off an island off the coast of Spain. Anyone from there, near there? Must be nice. Um, go to File, Share as a Service. And here's that Share as a Service dialog. OK, what do you want to do? Do you want to make a new web service? Do you want to make a service definition file? Or do you want to overwrite an existing service? I will make a new service. I'll hit Next. I connect to my GIS server, and I have many different connections, okay, but I'll leave the default. I give it a name, Geology Island, and I'll call it UC. Hit Next. Where do I want to put it? Notice now I have three folders, Demos, Naperville, UC. I'll, put, I'll pick UC, but just so we're all clear, it matches the folder structure here. You guys see that? Demos, Naperville, UC. The hosted system and utilities are special folders we don't normally publish to. So I'm going to publish to UC. Hit continue. This opens up the service editor dialog. Here is where I set all my different parameter settings for my web services, right? So uh, do I want to enable clustering? Do I want to enable some of these capabilities? We know that some of those OGC specs, it's a fancy term for internet protocol, right? A different way to communicate with it. Do I want to enable some special operations? Um, how many resources do I want to assign to that web service? By default, I'll have one instance. I may have two. If I know the piece of data that I'm going to share is going to be very popular and hit many times, I may want to bump this number up. Okay. Do I want to make it cached or dynamic? By default, it's dynamic. Maybe I want to make it cached. If I choose to make it cached, then I would have to specify my tile levels. I am not an expert in this UI. Go to the caching session. I know it's here. All right. Then, of course, do I want to have my comprehensive metadata? That was a joke. We, no one makes metadata. No one does metadata, right? It's an afterthought. <laughs> then I hit Analyze. I click this to say, OK, ArcMap, tell me if I've optimized my data for the internet. Oh, I'm getting an error. No transformation for this data frame exists. It's an error. Now, this should work. I tested this yesterday. Uh, I'm going to close this. New. No. I'm going to go back and open up that right map. So I'll, I apologize. Server demos, Geology Island. I'm going to reopen this. Maybe this is the map. Yeah. OK, let me just go ahead and publish. Oh, oh, I know why. I think because I, I left it on cache. If I do dynamic now, yeah, see, that's what happened. I was just testing you to see if you were paying attention. See? Yes. <laughs> Hit publish. Okay. So now, what is it doing? Taking the data from desktop, generating that web service with all my settings. Okay. And 
You are welcome to put in your survey feedback form, Derek needs a faster machine, because I'm running this behemoth here. <laughs> Just bear with me, it takes, it takes about half a minute. All right. Okay, so good question, ma'am. Just so we're all clear, I had, and this, so what happens is when I take my data and I do my analysis, the software will report to me different things. I get a, an error which means, hey, I'm, I'm not going to be able to publish this. You need to fix this when it's read. Or the warning saying, hey, you should fix this. Otherwise, the service may be slow. The data has not been optimized. Now, and for demo purposes, I totally ignored it. But in the real world, yes, it's probably a best practice for me to right click in that chart, fix the issue, and it will optimize your data. I'm not going to guarantee it'll be more performant, but it'll make it definitely optimized for the service. Okay? So it's published and I hit OK. Now I go back to Manager. I'm going to refresh my view. And here is my Geology on UC service, and I can click to view it, and here we go. It's very lovely, this, this map service. I know you're not going, ooh, it's not an amazing 3D demo, but you guys get the idea, right? Why did it not work when you had the question Sure. So the question was uh, earlier, when I published it, why did I get that error? Because I wanted to make it cached. Because what happened is, earlier, before you guys showed up and I was prepping for this demo, I added a base map from ArcGIS Online. And we can't build a cache of that base map. What I would have to do is remove it. Even though it's hit, so that's why I reopened the map. Um, I think, although I'm not an expert, somehow ArcMap still thought that base map was still in memory, so I was getting that error. That's my guess, but I'm not an expert. Yes, sir? If you had a number of group layers, would it publish all of those, or just the one that you're on? So let's be clear on the question. If I had a number of group layers, this bold text is a data frame. If I, ha whatever's inside the data frame will get published as a map service altogether. Now, just as an FYI, I am not a publishing expert, but let's say I had 20 layers of data in this data frame. All those 20 layers would then get published as a single map service. Whether or not that's optimal, I, d I don't think that's a good idea. That's just my experience. Now, I want to clarify that because what if I had multiple data frames? So multiple bold text in that table of contents, it only publishes the active data frame. Okay? You guys are like nailing me here because I'm like a server portal back office person. I'm not a publishing person, but these are good questions. Anybody else? Yes, sir. How do you determine the extent of the published map? The extent of the published map usually defaults to the visual extent of what you see in the viewer, but you can change that if you want. So, okay, we're kind of sidebarring now, but just as an FYI, the gentleman asked, um, when I'm publishing a cache, how do I find the extent of the data? Normally what I do to find extent of the data is I right click, go to properties, there's a, it's in one of these settings here, maybe it's under general, thank you. No, there's, I'm looking for. There's a, right here, sorry, oh, blind. This is that spatial extent. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir? Ah, good question. The gentleman asked, when I'm publishing the data, is it copying it or am I referencing it? I have a whole half hour demo on that in the advanced server admin session. In this case, by default, I copy the data to the server. That's not a best practice. And I explain why in the advanced session, sir. So if you come back, because we go into data stores, it's, it's quite a long discussion. So, but yes, you can change that. Yes, sir? What about relationship classes? The question is, let me see if I got your question right. What if I've set up a relationship class? Do we support it? The answer is yes, in ArcMap. Correct. So if I, let's be clear. If I have a data layer, I built a relationship class with it, we do support it. 
So the relationship class will pass over to the web service. The caveat you need to be aware of, however, sir, is I have my data layer. I need to manually add the related table to the map document before I publish it. At 10.1, um, we used to, if you didn't add that table, we would pull a source table. That was a security hole. So at 10.2, we changed the behavior where if you have a relationship class, it would not pull the source table. You have to manually and explicitly add it to the map document first before you publish. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Sure. You guys are like killing me. This is that's an advanced question as well. But yes, I can show you. I've published this geology on map service. The lady's asking, so it copied it, Derek. What the heck? I want to know where it is. No problem. I click this can icon. Oh, this is referenced, so it didn't copy it. I would okay, let's imagine I copied the data. <laughs> let's imagine I had the copy tab selected. I would click on it and it would show you the location. Does that make sense? So that was not the demo that I was going to show. This, again, this is all like the, in the admin session, I promise you, I do talk about this in more detail. Um, does that help, ma'am? Yeah, but can you put the show where that that uh, You know what? Yeah, um, that's going to totally derail my session. Come to the admin session, ma'am, and I promise I will show the data store concept for 20 minutes in detail. It's called administering your GIS server. It's happening tomorrow. I want to say 10:15. I'm not sure. Let me uh, come see me after. Okay. Great questions. I'm glad. See, you guys shouldn't be here. No. Great questions. You know, um, I we I promise you, I cover it there. But it's a, it's a 20 minute discussion. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So the lady made a comment, sometimes when I publish a map service, I cannot see the accurate table of the layer. And I'm going to say, that's not happened to me. I suspect something is amiss with your data. We can take this offline. I, I, I've never seen that. That's like a, a specific issue. Did you open up tech support incident? No. Did you open up Firebug and Fiddler to track the communication? Let's talk about it offline, ma'am. I, I haven't seen that behavior. OK. I want to make sure that you guys get to your, you know, we're on track here. So anything you make in desktop, you can publish as a web service pretty much. Okay? So it's pretty powerful. And these are the different service types. On the bottom here, I have, just as an FYI for those of you who are new, if I want to enable web editing, I publish a feature service. If I want to share a spatial model that I make in Toolbox or, or Model Builder, I publish a geoprocessing service. Or if I want to do geocoding or have my own custom geocode service, I publish a locator service. Okay? So all of these types are here. Now remember what I said with cache versus dynamic, right? And I said there's a third part to the story. Remember that? Yeah. Well, at 10.4, we have this new thing called a vector tile. Right? This is cool. This is something you create in ArcGIS Pro where you can take your vector tile, oh, sorry, your vector data create what's called a vector tile. It's, it's, it's got the good performance of a cache map service with some limited flexibility for your data to be dynamic. So let me put that asterisk, but it's some flexibility, right? So here you can see we can change the display quality. Vector tiles are optimized for tablets and smartphones. We can also have dynamic labeling. So you can see on the right-hand side, even though I've made a vector tile, when I zoom in or zoom out, those labels will rotate, which is pretty cool. I can also change how the data is rendered by styling that cached vector tile. There's a whole other tech session on vector tiles, because I'm not an expert. I know it's there. But my point is now, your choices, as, as a best practice, we recommend your choices are cached map services or vector tiles. Life is good. We want you to have faster, uh, more performant web services. We recommend you use a vector tile. Don't ask me any vector tile questions. Go here, please. I'm already out of my depth. All right, but again, we have lots of sessions. Um, the, the, the one, uh, you know, best practices for cache maps and vector tiles, go ask your ArcGIS Pro questions, sir. They will answer you. Uh, we have a tile cache session at, uh, uh, sorry, that was yesterday. I should have removed that. 
We have feature services session for web editing to, on tomorrow, and also for geoprocessing as well. Okay. All right, let's look at step three now, sharing our GIS content. We know um, how to author our content. We know conceptually how to publish our content. What do I do with it, right? On this slide here, it's a screen capture of the server site with our REST services directory. And as I mentioned, every one of those links represents a web service or a data layer you can access. I can do one of two things with that web service. I could register it with ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS so people can access that data. Or I can work with that web service directly through a client application. How do I do this, right? Well, for ArcGIS for server, as I mentioned earlier this morning, with server standard or advanced, you get portal for ArcGIS included at no additional cost. So you could stand up your own portal, your central destination point for your GIS assets. It has a look and feel like ArcGIS Online. You may want to install this in your own infrastructure if you have security requirements, if you want to have absolute control on your front end, right? Or you could use ArcGIS Online. It's entirely up to you. Let me just show you what I mean. Let me recap here. I mentioned earlier, this is ArcGIS Server Manager with all my web services, right? This is the administrator view. As the admin, he or she can log in here, and I see a very beautiful, nice user experience. However, my regular people who are not admins, they get exposed to this. The services directory. It's not a very nice user experience. But to our defense, this was designed for developers. Developers would click a folder, see a service they want, copy paste the URL, copy paste the REST endpoint into their code to access that web service. So instead of the services directory, we're telling you, hey, why don't you install portal for ArcGIS. You get it at no additional cost with server standard and advanced. And now the regular person, he or she, can go to the gallery and have a very nice, elegant user experience to browse all the resources, right? So here we have a very nice thumbnail. I can hover and view the different content that I have. I can go to the item details page, and you can see my comprehensive metadata. That was a joke to understand what's in there, right? More importantly, oh, I like this Naperville map. Let me open it up in the map viewer. Inside portal for ArcGIS or ArcGIS Online, we have this map viewer. This is designed for the non-GIS expert, right? It gives you a very Google map-like user experience. I can come in here, I have some simple controls, and I can, what can I do? Well, I can symbolize my data if I want to. I could look for new data, so what else do I want to add? I can also save it as a web map. We're empowering the non-GIS expert to do some simple mapping and save a web map inside a portal, whether it's online or portal for ArcGIS. When I save a web map, am I copying my data? No. All I am doing behind the scenes is saving a text file, a configuration file written in JSON that stores references to my data. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the lady asked, you can publish from ArcGIS Pro directly to a portal. Is there an advantage to do that versus publishing from ArcMap to server and then registering your web service? Um, and the answer is not really. It depends on your workflow. Um, we're kind of getting a bit out of scope, but if I publish from ArcMap to ArcGIS server and then register my web service to portal, I can set special properties for that item, such as configuring a pop-up. For example, this, this hydrology, just so, again, I'm proving to you no smoke and mirrors. This hydrology um, is actually a web service running from ArcGIS server. But what I could do is I can click on here and enable pop-ups. You see these pop-ups? So now I can click on that lake and I get this pop-up effect. 
Now, if I go from ArcMap to, to ArcGIS Server, make an item in Portal, I can set that pop-up in Portal, right? If I go from ArcGIS Pro to Portal, I can actually define that pop-up in ArcGIS Pro. Does that make sense? So it depends on your workflow and what you want to do. Okay. The question is, can the data be downloaded from Portal to a user? The answer is maybe. I'm not trying to be funny. Depends on how you share it to Portal. And again, we'll cover that at the 1015 session. Okay. All right. So now I have this web map, and I can save it. Right? I told you guys that. A web map is a copy of my data, right? Who says yes? Who says no? Yes. The answer is no. <laughs> okay. Web map, really important, is not a copy of my data. It's just a configuration file references my data. The point I want to make is if someone goes into a portal, saves a web map, they've made their own information product, that web map can now be opened by all of Esri's client applications. So collector, ops dashboard, web app builder, the templates, pretty powerful. Think of a web map, loosely in quotes, like a universal data format, built by a non-GIS expert. That's pretty powerful. So going back to the slides here, we all know what portal for ArcGIS is, right? Component of ArcGIS server allows you to install the ArcGIS online user experience within your own infrastructure, right? Um, you would pick it if you have security requirements or you want absolute control. And a key part of that is this idea of a web map, not a copy of your data, but a configuration file that you can make in the map viewer. What makes the web map really powerful, of course, is that it can be consumed by all the other applications. And things like that pop-up I defined would be saved as a property of that web map. So let's think about that. Um, a couple of key concepts I want to explain. We have base maps, so layers at the bottom. You would typically use them from ArcGIS Online. You also have operational layers, your business data that you put on top of base maps, right? So operational layers typically go on top of base maps. These are the pieces that form a web map. And as I mentioned, if I have a web map, it can be opened up to everything. This is huge. Let's look at the diagram here. I have my services from ArcGIS Server. I reference them with a portal. Could be online or portal for ArcGIS. I make a web map. So a non-GIS expert, he or she can save their own information product, their own display settings, their own pop-ups, et cetera. All those settings will be honored across our entire stack. That is huge. The question is, will I be able to see that on Map Studio? I'm sorry, App Studio. Good question. Uh, I'm not sure. I need to follow up on that, sir. Not sure. We can check at the island. I'm not sure. The other thing on this slide I want you to be aware of: everything in yellow included with server standard or advanced. So you have access to this. Nobody's excited. Okay. Well, I don't know. <laughs> All right. So I kind of got ahead of myself and already showed Portal, right? But let me show you a quick client app, okay? Another great thing about Portal is this. I have, let's say I have this, uh, I have, I'm going to save this web map, okay? Bless you. Now I can hit share, and I can actually build a brand new application around this web map. I am not a developer. I don't write code, but I can look smart and pretend I write code. Here, I have a template. We have about 30 different predefined templates. I take my web map, hydrate it into a template, and I have an app right away. Or I can choose Web App Builder. This is pretty cool. Scroll down, hit Create, Get Started. And now I go through this whole builder environment where I can start to set custom colors, custom look and feel, pick and choose which functional widgets I want, which are pieces of functionality, title, logo, et cetera, build a brand new web application built on JavaScript. This tool is awesome. The application by default lives in Portal, but if I want to, I can download the code and configure it and customize it more. OK, if there's one thing you, you know, one Web App Builder is awesome. I cannot say this is, you know, push this enough. It's built on JavaScript. 
it works in any web browser on any device. So I can actually see how will my app look on the iPhone 6S. Let me click this widget here. This is how it's going to look. This is, pre this is where you go, ooh, this is awesome, dude. I, uh, iPad mini, this is how it looks. OK, I don't, I don't have the 3D stuff. You guys are killing me. Okay. Yeah, ooh, I think this is awesome. So just FYI on that. All right, a few more slides, and then I'll be done. Um, OK, so portal sessions. If you want to go to the portal sessions, the Tuesday one is already over. I'm giving one at 10.15, so in 45 minutes, right across the hall, if you want to go into portal in more detail. Um, there's also the portal admin session. I'll be doing that this afternoon and also tomorrow. Uh, caveat on the portal admin session, Bill and I, we go under the covers by the fourth slide. So it's kind of, it's not for the faint of heart. I'm just telling you now, it's, um, it's a deep dive into portal. Okay. All right. Now, in your organization, if you're a medium to large organization, you can actually have multiple GIS servers for different departments, all referencing or have all their services registered with ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS. We want to tell customers to think of the portal as the central destination point for all of your GIS assets. Okay. And this is everyone's favorite slide, licensing, right? If I get, that was a joke, if I want to get a server, I can get basic, standard, or advanced, depending on levels of functionality and also depending on capacity. Thing to be aware of here is for a work group, you have to install everything on one single machine. Um, but you get portal with standard and advanced. And, and advanced gives you a whole suite of functionality. Remember, with standard and advanced, you also get all the client applications as well. Okay? So keep, keep. Sorry? Uh, the question was, for Portal, I must have Pro. The answer is, that is not correct. It depends on what you want to do. If I want to, what I showed is publishing from ArcMap to a GIS server, and I can still register that service in Portal. If I want to publish directly to Portal, then I need to have ArcGIS Pro, sir. Okay. Um, okay. We also have extensions. This is a screen capture of the esri.com uh, sl uh, site slash server slash extensions. And you can see for some functionality, like the lady asked about image services, well, I have to get the image extension. If I want to publish network data sets, I have to get the network analyst extension. If I want to do QAQC workflows, I may want to get the data reviewer extension. All right, so it depends. For more resources, because we care, we always have doc, right? That third bullet's pretty important, server.arcgist, sorry, server.arcgist.com. This is the help documentation for server. I have it bookmarked. In fact, I don't even have to have it bookmarked. When I open up a new tab, it's the first thing that shows up. I, you know, because I know we all read the doc, right? We also have a um, couple of other documents. If you Google ArcGIS for Server 101, there's an Arc User Technical article which goes over in more detail the different components of ArcGIS Server. And then, of course, if you Google ArcGIS Server Functionality Matrix, you'll see this, it's like a 25-page doc that breaks down all the different functional pieces and what tools you get at what level, et cetera. Okay. So, thank you guys. This is, let's summarize our session, right? We talked about, hopefully, everyone now will leave. We know what ArcGIS Server is, allows you to have web GIS in your infrastructure. We talked briefly about the architecture, so ArcGIS Server Manager, the Services Directory, the Server Administrator Directory, showed you how to publish a service from ArcMap to the GIS server, talked a bit about Portal and how the importance of web maps. We talked a bit about licensing as well and the extensions, right? Thank you guys for showing up. Please fill out the survey if you have comments. And if you have questions, come see me. If you want a copy of the PowerPoint, send me an email or get my card and send me an email, all right? Enjoy the rest of your conference, guys. Thanks.